Well, it harkens back to what Adolf Hitler did in Germany in the 1930s with what he did with Jews and, and, and people from Romania and Catholics, and basically saying they were the enemy within. They were the ones keeping you from succeeding in the course of the so Joel 2.28, And it shall come to pass afterward that I shall pour my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions. Matthew 24 verse 33 So likewise, when ye see all these things, know that it is near, even at the door. Happy Sabbath, friends. I hope all of you are fine. Revelation 1 verse 7 Behold, he comes with the clouds, and every eye shall see him, even they that pierced him, and all the kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. 2 Peter 1 verse 12 Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you in remembrance of these things, though ye know them, and be established in the present truth. Revelation 14, 9-11 And a third angel followed after them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark, on his forehead or on his hand the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of god which is poured out without mixture into his cup of indignation and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the lamb and the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever and they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. John 16 verse 13. How bait when he the spirit of truth is come, he shall guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he shall show you things to come. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you so much for this wonderful Sabbath. We pray that now you may speak to your children as you promised through your Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, I pray and believe. Amen. Okay, friends. We are here and we are going to look at the signs of the times. As Jesus said, watch and pray. Watch and do what? Watch and pray. That was the main thing that Christ said. Now, what is happening in our world and how is it fulfilling the signs that Jesus said that when we see all these things, we know that he is near even at the door. Friends, Jesus says clearly in Revelation 3 verse 3, uh, if thou will not watch, I will come to thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know the hour I will come upon thee. So clearly from there, Jesus says, uh, if you don't watch, he will come to you as a thief. But if you watch and pray, he will not come to you as a thief. First Thessalonians 5 verse 4 says clearly, But ye brethren are not in darkness, that that day should take you as a thief. Yes, friends. And also Amos 3 verse 7 says clearly, For the Lord God will do nothing except he reveal his secrets to his servants, the prophets. Amen, friends. So clearly, we have the testimony of Jesus and uh, the Ten Commandments. Revelation 12, 17. Revelation 19, 10 says clearly, And I fell at his feet to worship him, and he said unto me, Do it not. I am of thy fellow servant, the prophets, mm, that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy so clearly the word of god is clear telling us what we should expect before the second coming of christ amen friends we are told here by the spirit of prophecy mm -hmm. then i saw the mother of harlots that the mother was not the daughters but separate and distinct you see that from them she has had her day and it is past her daughters the protestant sex were the 
were the next to come on the stage and act out the same mind uh, that the mother had uh, when she persecuted the saints. I saw that as the mother has been declining in power, the daughters had been growing and soon they will exercise the power once uh, exercised by their mother. So friends, the book of Revelation 17, it speaks about a woman sitting on a dragon that has seven heads uh, and that woman is dressed in purple and scarlet decked with the gold ornaments. As clearly we know, a woman represents a church. The book of Ephesians 5.25, Ephesians 5 verse 32. So clearly, there is a pure church, a pure system of truth, and there is a, a, an error, an error, or we can say a deceptive system, okay? So Revelation 17 talks about the mother of harlots, which we saw clearly, that woman sitting on that dragon represents the Catholic Catholic system. The word of God calls the Catholic system mother of harlots. Huh? They call themselves we are the mother church. Huh? So they are the harlot of Revelation 17. And clearly friends we are not against the people but we are against the system of Catholicism because it is not of God. Okay, The system of God keeps the commandments of God and the testimony of Jesus. Now the Catholic system says uh, that he's the mother of all churches. Now, he has daughters. The daughters are the Sunday keeping churches. Them that follow the system of the harlot. And clearly, Revelation 13 uh, verse, uh, verse 12, it says clearly, And he exercises all the power of the first beast. So, in history, we saw clearly when the papacy or the Pope of Rome decided to persecute the saints. He was saying that if you're being found with the Bible in your house and you're not a priest, we are going to burn you. And that spirit was of the devil. But the Bible predicted clearly he will do that to the saints, which the papacy did in the Dark Ages from 538 to 1798. We are told now, friends, America will soon force religion on the people. Believe it or not, friends, it is coming. It will begin in America and the whole world will follow the lead of America. So clearly, look at this. What the Pope is saying, he wants us to have one religion. He doesn't want differences among Christianity. Huh? Look at this. We are told here. Look at that article. That is the papacy himself. Yes, friends. Uh, yes, friends. That's the papacy himself. Look what the Pope is saying. Uh, the Pope of uh, Catholicism is saying clearly, we don't want differences among Christians. Let us be one church. Not knowing if we be one church in the whole world, uh, that is the church of the Antichrist. Because there is no place in the Bible where it says the whole world will be a Christian. Uh, never, friends. We are told here, Pope says uh, he hopes for reconciled differences among Christians. Look at that. So the Pope wants one religion and very soon the government will say we don't want other churches. We want one church. And if you're not going to church, you'll be taken. Huh? Look at this. Pope Francis hopes for reconciled differences with the Orthodox and Protestant Christians. So clearly, he says, I need now them to come back. I need my daughters back. Huh? As you are told clearly, the daughters will be like the mother, as you have read from there. Now, America is going to use very soon the military on the citizens. You see, friends, the way in Kenya we saw the protest, huh? we saw the protest and then the military came in. Now, a time like that is going to come and it will never return to normal. Thank to God, uh, the protests came and they went, but they are coming again. Huh? They, they came, they went, but they are coming again. And when they come again, uh, they will never go again. Huh? They will remain until Jesus comes. Because Christ says clearly in Luke 21, 25, uh, he says there shall be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars. And upon the earth, uh, distress in nations. So expect and rest to come upon the world. Mm? Look at this. We are told here, Trump wants military against enemy from within on election day. Okay, so America is going to have 
an election. And as we saw, the side of Trump say we support God in the government. Uh, the side of Kamala Harris, they say we don't care about God, we want LGBT people. But clearly, friends, all these two systems are used by the devil. The book of uh, Daniel eleven twenty seven, 27, we are told that uh, both of this king's heart shall be to do mischief and they shall speak lies uh, at one table. So both of these mindset are to deceive the people in the world. So never take side with those people who say, oh, we need God in the government. Or those people who say, oh, we, don't wa uh, we want to put LGBT in the government. No, friends, don't take side. Our work is to sit down investigate God's word and remain with the word because this side that says we need God in the government they will force people to worship God and we know clearly God is a God of love he cannot force men huh? God wants you and I to worship him because we love not because the government has said huh? and another thing also friends the side of LGBT people they want uh, LGBT laws don't join them also stay here with god's word and the truth so clearly they say on election day we want the military to be there to be there mm -hmm. so in case maybe the side of trump takes and uh, civil war breaks out the military is ready to cool it down but of course we know clearly the end is near look at this it says uh, trump wants the military used against americans who don't support him on election day okay so people who don't support the mindset of uh, this man as he says uh, but this man is really standing for the mount mindset of catholicism as we saw clearly everything they believe in project 2025 uh, sunday observance all of it is just catholicism uh, despite they say they are protestants that is why you have been told the daughters will exercise the mind uh, that their mother once exercised so look at this hmm? donald trump suggests using military to stop radical left on election day i'm not for the radical left or the right no friends we are for jesus christ uh, huh? so don't take any sides now he will speak himself and then we shall see how will military affect uh, the way people will worship in the future because it is going to be a law and those who don't go with it uh, you will be killed uh, as the word of god says clearly so listen to him uh, as uh, he will speak i think the bigger problem are the people from within we have some very bad people we have some sick people radical left lunatics and i think they're the and and it should be very easily handled by if necessary by national guard or if really necessary by the military Well, I always say, so we have two enemies. We have the outside enemy, and then we have the enemy from within. And the enemy from within, in my opinion, is more dangerous than China, Russia, and all these countries, because if you have a smart president, he can handle them pretty easily. I handled, I got along great with all, I handled them. But the thing that's tougher to handle are these lunatics that we have inside. friends so you have heard from there clearly the enemy within should be used with what with the military of course we know at last it will be blaming god's people as uh, the cause of no prosperity in the land they are the bad guys now listen to this next one keenly which he said that uh, when you say the enemy within uh, it is going sometime to refer to majorly some religious groups uh, they will say that way maybe they can say Catholics, they can say war, they can say Jews. Now, when they say enemy within, listen to what it means. This is what it means. Listen for them to speak. Uh huh. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's really important to point out the history of the terms enemy within and what Donald mm -hmm. Trump's talking about. And this basically harkens, it's, it's, there's a long history of it, and it's never been good. 
I mean, it harkens back in our own history against anti anti immigrants, anti Jews. In the course of our own history, you're talking about the enemy within, telling people why they're struggling is because somebody here is causing them to struggle. It obviously is Joe McCarthy who did all the red baiting, and it also is harkens back to what Adolf Hitler did in Germany in the 1930s with what he did with Jews and 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 people from Romania and Catholics, and basically saying they were the enemy within, they were the ones keeping you from succeeding in the course of this. So and so I think. David's right. I think we have to all be very clear about this. And so the choice that's going to be made is this. Donald Trump has, has not hesitated to say what he wants to do, what his intentions are, and what he's going to do. And we have, and so you have heard from there clearly what they have spoken about. Uh, they have said that this enemy within issue, that is what they, Hitler did. Uh, and he was anti Jews. Uh, they were blaming maybe Catholics. Oh, we know, friends. Where the ball will swing, it will be blaming Seventh day Adventists. And clearly, he has said uh, it was in the past the enemy within, they were anti Jews. Uh, they were blaming, let's say, Catholics. And clearly, friends, we know that uh, at last it will be blaming God's people because uh, they are not honoring Sunday. Yes, friends, that is it clearly. Uh. Now, I want you to listen again. Listen keenly. He will say, the blaming of what of catholics the blaming of jews and remember seven day adventist majorly those sunday keepers they identify us as jews but we are not friends we are different we are following jesus christ listen to them listen listen yeah, I mean, I, I think it's really important to point out the history of the terms enemy within and what Donald mm -hmm. Trump's talking about. And this basically harkens, it's, it's, there's a long history of it, and it's never been good. I mean, it harkens back in our own history against anti-immigrants, anti anti-Jews. In the course of our own history, you're talking about the enemy within, telling people why they're struggling is because somebody here is causing them to struggle. It obviously is Joe McCarthy who did all the red baiting. And it also is, harkens back to what Adolf Hitler did in Germany in the 1930s with what he did with Jews and, and, and people from Romania and Catholics, and basically saying they were the enemy within. They were the ones keeping you from succeeding in the course of this. So, and so I think David's right. I think we have to all be very clear about this. And so the choice that's going to be made is this. Donald Trump has, has not hesitated to say what he wants to do, what his intentions are, and what he's going to do. And we have Yes, friends. So clearly from there, we know the enemy from within, it will be a religious group. And that religious group will be the one that does not go with the project 2025. Friends, just listen to this. Huh? They say if you don't bow to his will, huh, they will use uh, the military. We are going to get into the Bible. Just listen to this. Listen. Listen to what uh, the left is saying. Huh? Look at these things, friends. They are conflicting each other. This mindset. Look at this. Listen. He's talking about the enemy within Pennsylvania that he considers anyone who doesn't support him or who will not bend to his will an enemy of our country. He is saying that he would use the military to go after them. We know who he would target and we know who he would target because he has attacked them before. Journalists whose stories he doesn't like election officials who refuse to cheat by filling extra votes and finding extra votes for him. Judges who insist on following the law instead of bending to his will. This is among the reasons I believe so strongly that a second Trump term would be a huge risk for America and dangerous. Donald Trump is increasingly unstable and unhinged. That was Harris on stage in Erie, Pennsylvania. She did something that we don't normally see her do at her rallies, which is she turned and played sound bites of Trump and his quotes. And Friends, you have heard from there clearly. Huh? So the minds are conflicting. Now, let's get into our Bible. The book of Revelation 13 verse 11 says, I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, having two horns like a lamb, and he spoke 
as a dragon amen friends so clearly america will speak as a dragon will it coerce the people to worship yes friends it will it will use uh, even the military to do that friends the book of daniel chapter 3 hmm? the book of what the book of daniel chapter 3 we saw clearly nebuchadnezzar religio politico when he put up the image to be worshipped by the people did he use uh, the men of the army to to coerce the men uh, to bow down and worship his image uh? did uh, the army system be involved uh, with religio politico did it friends did it yes friends let's get the book of daniel chapter 3 i think verse uh, 21 let's see daniel 3 Daniel 3 verse 20. Look at that, friends. Nebuchadnezzar, religio politico. Okay? Religio politico used the uh, system of the army to put Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego into the furnace because they refused to worship the image. Look at this. Daniel 3 verse 20. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army. That is army, military. The system of army the system of military will be under religio politico mm. army to bind shadrach meshach abednego and to cast them into the burning finance amen friends so as it was in old babylon so it will be today in america speaking as a dragon look at this friends the king of the north religio politico daniel 11 it says clearly he will come with water he will come with what let's read he will come with chariots and uh, horsemen look at this friends daniel 11 verse 40 mm. and at the time of the end shall the king of the south push at him that was in 1798 religious uh, secularism came and took over what happened and the king of the north shall come against him so we have been living in a period of the king of the south secularism but soon the mindset will get to the king of the north religio politico who will come with what come against him like a wild wind with the chariots huh? and with horsemen with many ships he shall enter into the countries and shall overflow and pass over so clearly the system of the military will be used huh, by religio politico to force people to go with the will of religio politico what about jesus christ did the army use or did the soldiers <laughs> did the soldiers persecute christ did they if they did also god's people will be persecuted by the soldiers the book of matthew matthew 27 look at this matthew 27 verse 27 amen friends look at this jesus christ then the soldiers of the governor took jesus into the common hall and gathered to him a whole band of soldiers finish that military hmm? and they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe so clearly jesus christ was crucified by the military so the military will be used uh, to force people to go with the mindset of religio politico okay we praise god for that he has revealed so that when it come our faith might increase yes friends so christ himself was persecuted by the soldiers so also god's people the same is coming now friends remember also revelation 12 we are told clearly there uh i think in verse 15 you can check it out where the dragon spew water unto the woman that the water should destroy the woman so the waters there indicate military or edicts which was sent remember water represent people revelation 17 verse 15 now friends remember also the moment when crossing the red sea when pharaoh sent armies against god's people so clearly friends we know that the army will be used against god's people there will be a death decree for that so may the lord help us all now friends as we were studying we saw clearly that uh, this issue of uh, military is just part of the project 2025 as we have been studying all the time all the time so let's take care mm -hmm. now remember jd vance huh, as he's saying he will be the vice president listen he said we should use uh, power ruthlessly 
ruthlessly, ruthlessly, ruthlessly. Listen. You really need to be really ruthless when it comes to the exercise of power. I don't think there's sort of a compromise that we're going to come with the people who currently actually control the country. Unless we overthrow them in some way, we're going to keep losing. We have heard there clearly, friends. So we need to be ruthless with power. You see the way Ruto was, it will be more worse than that. So may the Lord help us all, friends. And remember one thing, the end is coming. Am I ready? Are you ready? The world is soon to change. And the last day events will be rapid once. So friends, let's get to the study of today. I hope you have gotten something. The military majorly is going to be used. And they say the enemy within. As you have heard, the enemy within is a religious sect. And that religious sect will be those who refuse to honor Sunday by law. Now, friends, look at this. Revelation 13 speaks of uh, religio politico. And uh, religio politico will take control of the economic system since no man will buy or sell. He will take control of uh, the business system because he will say we need to work for six days and rest on Sunday. So he'll just overthrow everything. He'll take control of the, uh, of the military system. So everything that you think in life will be under the control of religious political. That is why Paul was saying, let no man lie unto thee. For that day will not come except there be a falling away and the man of sin be revealed. The son of perdition. That I was talking about the papacy. Religio politico must be revealed before the second coming. So friends, may the Lord keep us faithful. And let's get into the study for today. It's about the flesh, okay? About the flesh. The book of uh, Psalms 63 verse 1. The book of Psalms 63 verse 1 says, uh, We should long for God. We should teach our flesh to long for God uh, like a land uh, without water. Mm, yes, friends. Psalms 63 verse 1. Mm -hmm. Psalm 63 verse 1. O God, uh, thou art my God. Mm. My soul... Uh, Tasted for thee, my flesh, my flesh, my flesh longed for thee in a dry and a thirsty land in which there is no water. So, friends, we should tell Jesus, I long for thee. I am thirsty that you be in my flesh. Amen. Let's move. The book of Psalms 65, verse 2. Psalm 65, 65 verse 2. All flesh goes to God uh, through prayer. Yes, friends. All flesh goes to God through prayer. Psalm 65 verse 2. Oh, thou that hearest the prayer, all flesh shall come to thee. Amen, friends. So when we have trouble, when we don't understand which way to follow, take it to the Lord in prayer. And then, friends, the book of Psalms 73 verse 26 our flesh is weak but god is our strength amen psalm 73 26 my heart and my flesh faileth but god is the strength of my heart and my portion forever amen friends god knows very well i am weak but he says what in me you are strong in weakness that is when you have power amen we are told in the book of psalms 79 verse 2 psalm 79 verse 2 friends let me tell you one thing when persecution comes the flesh of the saints will be on the streets huh? the flesh of the saints will be in the wilderness eaten by beasts and falls of the air am i ready for that friends we cannot be ready with our flesh, but in the spirit we can. The book of Psalm 79, verse 2. They have given, uh, they have given the body of thy servants unto. Uh, they have given the bodies of thy servants to be meat unto the falls of heaven, and uh, the flesh of the saints unto the beast of the earth. So friends, that is what is coming as it was in the dark ages. The story of the war dances. When you read it, you'll really cry because it is so touching in the heart. 
if you could see mothers with child uh, the ice has fallen of, on them they die of hunger persecution was really tough and it will be more worse than that Reve Daniel 12 we are told a time of trouble that has never been <clears throat> may God help us look at this the book of uh, Ecclesiastes 5 verse 6 let's see that Ecclesiastes 5 verse 6 Yes, friends, happy Sabbath again. Mm -hmm. The book of Ecclesiastes 5 verse 6. Uh, listen, we are told clearly in our flesh there is something which can make the whole uh, flesh to be lost, to go to hell. And that thing is the mouth. Huh? And that thing is what? The mouth. So you should take care of your, of your mouth. The book of Ecclesiastes 5 verse 6. Allow not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin neither say to the angel that it was an error wherefore why should god be angry at thy voice hmm? and destroy the work of thine hands yes friends so our voice the way we speak does it reflect jesus in everything we do does it reflect christ or when we speak we make god angry so let's take care, friends. The mouth is very delicate. Uh, so we are told here, Joel 2.28, uh, Upon our flesh, God uh, gives the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Amen, friends. He knows we are weak. That is why he gives us the gifts. So that we can be perfect as our Father in heaven is perfect. The book of uh, Joel 2.28, it says clearly, and afterward and it shall come to pass afterward that i shall pour my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions amen friends so god knows we are weak and that is why he gives us the gifts of the holy spirit so that we can be strong remember when jesus was going to heaven he told his disciples wait in jerusalem for the promise of the father that will give you more strength that you can have boldness like that of uh, joshua mm, and caleb when they went to see the land huh? so the lord is uh, really a true god we are told in the book of matthew Matthew 16, 17. Listen, flesh and blood cannot reveal anything. What have I said? Flesh and blood cannot reveal anything, but only our Father in heaven. So the flesh and blood, it doesn't benefit anything. But uh, our Father in heaven will reveal things to us, uh, not by your own thinking. Mm? Look, look at this, Matthew 16, 17. And uh, Jesus answered and said unto him, Simeon, Simeon of Bajona, blessed, let me repeat, blessed is you, Simeon, son of Bajona, huh? for flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. So Jesus Christ was asking his disciples, people say, who am I? And uh, the disciples started saying, some of the people say you are Elijah. Some of the people say you are the voice crying in the wilderness. But uh, Peter, Peter himself was asked by Jesus, who do you say I am? And uh, Peter said, you are Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Son of God. And Jesus said clearly, it is not flesh and blood that has revealed to you, but it is my Father in heaven, showing that flesh and blood does not help anything that is it what we need majorly is to pray to god to reveal many things unto us we are told in uh, the book of matthew matthew 24 verse 22 persecution will be shortened otherwise no flesh will be left jesus says that way matthew 24 22 and except those days be shortened there shall be no flesh be saved but for the elect's sake 
those days shall be shortened amen friends so even if they start forcing people for one religion they start forcing people for sunday worship oh it will take a short time because the days will be shortened uh the time of the devil is running out and every day he is gaining gaining uh is getting angry 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 very angry to devote any person who will say i love jesus and jesus says if you love me keep my commandments revelation 12 17 and the dragon was wrought with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of a seed those who keep the commandments of god and the faith of jesus amen friends so clearly the devil his time is short and he wants to go to hell with many people so we need to take care not to be among them that will lose heaven because if we don't stand firm we will miss heaven so it is a high time we look at ourselves and tell jesus oh lord help us to stand when that time comes we are told here matthew 26 41 jesus himself was saying that uh, the flesh is weak but the spirit is willing yes friends so the flesh is always weak but the spirit is willing jesus himself experienced that but at last he overcame the flesh so matthew 26 verse 41 watch and pray that he enter not into temptation for the spirit is indeed willing but the flesh is weak amen friends so as human beings the flesh is weak but we need to overcome we need to overcome we need to overcome the flesh and everything of the flesh because the spirit of jesus the holy spirit will give us power to overcome we are told in the book of john john 3 6 to 7 john 3 6 to 7 let's read that john 3 6 to 7 so clearly friends we need to be born again not to be born in the flesh but born in the spirit and how is someone born in the spirit huh? the book of john 3 6 to 7 listen to what jesus was saying huh? that which is born of the flesh is the flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit now how is a person born in the spirit huh? the flesh we know it is that process that god put there hmm? look at this verse 7 marvel not that i say to you you must be born again so what is being born again it is to be born in the spirit it is to have a new life in jesus christ it is to put off the old man and to wear the new man as we are told in romans 6 verse 6 and that the old man is crucified with christ that this new man might not serve sin anymore amen friends so clearly we need to be born in the spirit not in the flesh amen friends let's move the book of john 663 john 663 yes friends so clearly from there we see that uh, the flesh profit nothing amen friends so we need to be born in uh, the spirit born again that is it we need to have a new life in jesus the old life we need to forget it and tell god remove it from our sight the book of romans 6 verse 12 says uh, being uh, made romans 6 verse 12 says uh, that uh, yield not to the last of the flesh amen friends don't yield to the last of the flesh friends don't uh, don't do that romans 6 verse 18 says uh, being made free from sin uh, ye became servants of righteousness so if you are in jesus christ wherever you are weak uh, tell him to give you power to stand firm and uh, to reject those uh, evil desires the book of uh, john 6 verse 63 jesus says that the flesh profit nothing uh, jesus says the flesh profited nothing john 6 63 it is the spirit that quickens uh, the flesh profited nothing the words that i speak to you they are spirit and uh, they are life amen friends so indeed uh, we see our spiritual life and our normal life so if in the normal life you eat uh, so as to be healthy so as to remain in good uh, 
condition so also in the spiritual life you should be eating god's word huh? in the spiritual life you should be strong you know friends when people go to the gym huh? when they go to the gym they see oh i'm so healthy i'm so strong but spiritually are we uh, spiritually spiritually are you strong or are you a cripple huh? you know friends in a church we can be there but if you are dead in the spirit we are cripples huh? so may the lord help us in this world we have two sides huh? we have the flesh uh, and we have the spirit uh, in the spirit you should be strong in god's word in the flesh you should be also in a good condition don't focus too much on the outward appearing that you forget the spiritual life friends many people in the world uh, are dead spiritually they're just uh, like let's say when you when you walk on the road and they and then you need to assist some people maybe who have trouble huh they say let me assist him huh i'm a good samaritan but now friends of course assisting is not bad but i'm saying you assist someone because you say he has an issue maybe with the legs he's lame but you spiritually you are lame you don't have hands you don't have eyes where there is no vision the people perish so if you don't study the spirit of prophecy you don't have vision you don't have eyes you don't have spiritual eyes meaning in spiritual life you are blind huh? when you don't take the word of god huh? publishing huh? publishing with your feet huh? you are lame spiritually that is it friends may the lord help us we are told in the book of uh, romans 6 verse 19 let's move as we close romans 6 verse 19 we are told yield your flesh to righteousness amen friends yield your what your flesh to righteousness of god of course this body is weak but we must train it to righteousness romans na romans 6 19 it says uh, i speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh for as you have yielded your members servants to uncleanness and to iniquity even so now yield your members servants to righteousness to holiness so friends as the life in the past you know it huh? but now in jesus christ your members should be yielded to righteousness amen friends your eyes whatsoever things you see your eyes your everything that the lord has given to you should be yielded to righteousness and then friends the book of romans 8 verse 1 walk not after the flesh but after the spirit amen friends romans 8 verse 1 there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in christ jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit amen friends so clearly in jesus christ we need to walk in uh, the spirit let's move romans 8 verse 8 flesh cannot please god what the flesh cannot please god and it will never no wonder at the second coming this corruptible will put on incorruptible this mortal will put on immortality because this flesh will and does not please god romans 8 verse 8 so then they that are in the flesh cannot please god if we go with the flesh huh, we can never please god it is either we choose uh, to walk in the spirit and then first the book of romans 13 verse 14 do not fulfill the last of the flesh okay the last of the flesh should be avoided pray that lord help me to overcome the flesh huh? romans 13 verse 14 we are told but put you on lord jesus christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the last thereof so there is this war between the flesh and the spirit so the word of god says clearly be on the side of the spirit don't be on the side of the flesh because the flesh profited nothing huh? we are told in the book of uh, second first corinthians let's go there first corinthians wow 
Yes, friends, let's close up with these verses. So the book of 1 Corinthians 15 verse 50 says clearly, Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. It says, But brethren, I speak to you, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither corruption inherit in corruption. So it is a must, this uh, sinful body dies uh, so that the new one will come in. May the Lord help us. Now first the book of uh, 2 Corinthians 7 verse 1. Second Corinthians 7 verse 1, we are told uh, to remove uh, all filthiness uh, in our life. Look at this. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Amen, friends. So clearly, we are told despite we are weak in the flesh, God wants perfection in us because he knows that everything that comes in your life, you are able to overcome it and be perfect and live a holy life. Remember, friends, as Jesus Christ himself passed through the process, uh, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. But at last, Jesus Christ overcame the flesh. Also, all that profess to follow Jesus must overcome the flesh. The book of uh, Galatians 5.17, we are told clearly we should know there is a war between the flesh and what? And the spirit, uh, there is a war between the flesh and the spirit. So which side will you take? Will you take the flesh, which at last will represent the commandments and the thinking of men? Or will you go with the spirit, which will represent going with the will of God? So friends, the book of uh, Galatians, let's move there. The book of Galatians 5 verse 17. Let's read here. We are told clearly there is war and this war will be in us uh, until Jesus appears a second time. So when we reach heaven, that is when we shall not see this war. But in this world, this war will exist until Christ comes a second time. Galatians 5 uh, verse 17. We are told this way. It says, uh, uh -huh, For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary, the one to another, so that you cannot do the things that you would. Amen, friends. So there is this war between the flesh and the, and the spirit. So we should take the side of the spirit of God. And then, friends, we are told in the book of Galatians 5.19, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Listen, the work of the flesh are sin. Hmm? We are told they are what? They are adultery, fornication, and cleanness, all of them. Mm? And then verse 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience. Amen, friends. So we should take the part of the Spirit and not the part of the flesh. Now, friends, as we close, we are told in Galatians 5.24, Galatians 5.24, that... Uh, Every person that belongs to Jesus Christ must crucify the flesh as Christ did on Calvary. The book of Galatians 5.24 And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. Amen, friends. It is not easy, but it must be crucified there. It must, friends. The new man must come living in Jesus. We are told now, friends, in the book of 1 Peter 4 verse 2, that uh, not after the flesh, but after the will of God. Romans 4 verse 2, it says uh, that uh, he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the last of men, but to the will of God. So we should not go with the last of the flesh, but with the will of God. Okay? Now, friends, as we close, the book of Psalms 40, verse 8, we are told clearly that uh, I delight to do thy will, O God. Thy law is in my what? Is in my heart. So the law of God should be first. Now, friends, let's close with this verse. We have taken a lot of time, but it's the Sabbath.
Jude 1 verse 7, Man, you know what? Sodom and Gomorrah to be destroyed uh, was because of the lust of the flesh. It was because of uh, the will of men rather than the will of God. That was what made Sodom and Gomorrah to be destroyed. The book of Jude 1 verse 7, it says clearly, even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication, which you have seen, those are the fruit of the flesh huh? and going after strange flesh are set forth for example suffering the vengeance of internal fire so clearly from there what made sodom and gomorrah to be destroyed was the iniquity which came because of the will of the flesh so they went after the flesh rather than the spirit and Jesus says what in Luke 17, 28 to 30. As it was in the days of Lot, so shall it be when the Son of Man is revealed. So also in these last days, people are going to choose either to stand with the flesh and the laws of men or with the spirit and the commandments of God. So which part will you choose, friends? Remember... What brought about the crisis that we have in humanity? It was just eating the fruit uh, to satisfy self. Uh, eating the fruit to satisfy the flesh. Uh, amen, friends. Clearly, when uh, Eve ate that fruit uh, and gave to Adam and they ate uh, and they wanted to satisfy the flesh. And clearly, we know that was because of appetite. Uh, appetite affects the flesh so we should pray lord control my appetite amen lord control my passions lord control my emotions lord give me your spirit that i may live for you so friends have a blessed time and remember one thing there is war between the flesh and the spirit ensure you pick or fight for the spirit rather than fighting for the flesh amen friends may the lord help us and lord jesus keep us faithful let us believe and pray let's pray our master in heaven we thank you so much for this session indeed father we have spoken about the flesh and the spirit we have seen there is war between these two and majorly in us lord we are weak but in you we are strong you have said, Lord, we should remove all the filthiness of the flesh, all unrighteousness of the flesh, and put on the whole armor of Christ and be born in the Spirit. On ourselves, O oh Father, we cannot do this, but we depend upon Jesus Christ that uh, this new man uh, might serve Christ and uh, must be a servant to righteousness rather than being a servant to sin. Lord, we pray for power from the Holy Ghost to fill every person that has listened to the message that he may choose to fight and to protect the side of the spirit rather than the part of the self. In the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord, when you come, don't forget us in your kingdom. Keep us faithful until we meet in the clouds of glory. In the name of Jesus, I pray and believe. Amen.